Hey guys, what's going on? I am Tommy, a developer advocate at Linode. So welcome to the third video in this Django series. In the last video, we talked about static files in Django. We talked about template files, URLs in Django, and also submitting forms in Django. And if you missed that, there'll be like a link in the description below or a card in this video that you can use to watch that video. And in this video, we're going to be going into Django models. So Django model is a way of creating databases in Django. So without wasting any time, let's get into this video. Before we continue, Linode has a 60 day $100 coupon that you can use to follow along in this series, because we're going to use Linode for some services in this series. So check that out by the link in the description below. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel and let's go along with this video. So now we've been able to add our static files and set up our project to this point. What we want to do now is to actually go into what we call Django models. But before we go into Django models, I'm going to explain to you what we call the Django ORM. Now this Django ORM stands for Object Relational Mapping. So this basically allows us to interact with databases like PostgreSQL using like classes and objects. Now once you know that, what you need to, what we're going to do now is to go into the coding of that. Basically what he's saying is that we're going to use classes, normal Python classes, to you know, connect with database or build databases. So I'm going to show you how to do that in this video. So what we're going to do now is to come in here. In our views.py, we've been able to show you how to you know send data into your index.html template using this particular format right here. So since you know all of that and everything is working, let's actually close this style.css and yeah. So let's collapse this. Now when we are talking about models, models are basically they basically stand for like database in Django. So each model is like a database table in a normal PostgreSQL database, a normal SQL database. And because it uses object oriented programming, each class stands for the name of that particular database and each field or each attribute in that class stands for like a role in that database. So I'm going to show you how it is. So what we want to do now to create a new model is actually very simple. What we're just going to do is say class. So let's say we want to create a database table of like, let's say something of like school details. So we want to have like the number of teachers in the school, the name of the school, right? So what we're going to do is the name of that database should be school details, right? Or just school. And then it's going to have fields, database fields that says name, name of school, that says amount of teachers in the school, amount of students, amount of subjects, offered and all of that stuff. So for us to do this now, we're going to create a new model using a Python class. So right here, we're just in a Python class. So what we're going to do is to specify the name of that particular model or that database, if that makes sense. So now the name of that database, let's just name it school. So we have that as school. And we're going to do something called model models dot model. Now this is just showing that we want to use the Django model to create this. Like that, we have created a new database. And what we just want to do is to actually say, let's say name, it should be equals to models dot child field. So let me explain what this is in, in this Django method of creating databases using objects. We have different type of fields. So we have character field, we have integer field, Boolean field, date time field, basically every single field for every data structure that you know. So it depends on whatever you want to do that you know whatever field you need to use. So for example, we have a name. This is just a basic character field. And whenever you use a character field, you need to specify the maximum length that should be given in that character. So what we're going to do is to say max length. I want to say that should be equal to, let's say 100. I think 100 is a decent length. And let's say something like amount of teachers. So now we're saying amount of teachers, right? We should use an integer field. So this is just because it should obviously be an integer field because we can't have, we can't use like a, like a float field or something like that because amount of teachers should just be an integer. It should be a whole number. We can't have 2.5 amount of teachers. Is it that we have two teachers or three teachers? So that's why we use an integer field. And whenever you have an integer field, you can leave it blank like in here. You don't need to give it any parameter. 
So let's say amount of student also. So let's change this to students. And let's say models dot integer field also. I will leave that blank like that. And we can say, let's say number of subjects offered. Amount of subjects. So this is, you know, also an integer field. And let's just say owner of the school, right? So we can just say owner. Models dot integer field. So for owner, that's no integer field. That has to be a character field. And then as when we use a character field, we need to specify the length. So let's have one more that says something like is private owned. So now we want to use a Boolean field. So we want to say, no, if this school is a private school, it's privately owned. So that would be true or false. So what we can just say is private. Then we can just say models does a Boolean field. And when you have a models of Boolean field, you can give it a default. So you can say something like default is equals to true. That means every single time that you create, let's say true, Every single time that you create a new school, as default, that school is private. But, you know, we don't want to do that, so we can just remove that because we want the user to type in if that school is private or not. So, we can actually, this is actually what we need, right? We have the name, amount of teachers, students, subjects, the owner, and if the school is private or not. So, if you visualize this in a database table, the name of that database table is school, and each of the fields in that particular database table uh, name, amount of teachers, students, subjects, owner, and private. So now that we have this, what we need to do is to now tell Django that we've created this, we want to like migrate this or connect this to like a database. So as default, Django uses SQLite as your database. But in the next video, we're actually going to migrate everything we do in this video to a Postgres database only node because Postgres is much more you know efficient and is widely used than SQLite now and you can also scale your database with Postgres because it allows you to you know have lots of like big data values in your particular database compared to SQLite basically so what we can now do now since we know this is done what we just want to do is to migrate this onto what we call the Django database basically so what we're going to do, first of all, I'm going to show you something called the admin interface. So Django has this built-in admin interface that allows us to interfere with all our database or everything that our site is connected to. So what we're just going to do, I'm going to show you this database and we're going to come here. What we're going to do is do slash admin. So once we say slash admin, right, it's by default created by Django. So whenever I create a new project, all new, pro new Django projects have this slash admin in them. And it's going to ask you to log in. Now, this login, if I click on login now, you, it says, first of all, it says no such table as auth user and operational error. Now, first of all, this no such table is just saying that for us to log in, it needs to go to check into the database if this user is actually an admin user so we can log him in. But right here, he's saying no such table. So what he's saying is that there is no table that we can check any details from. So this is because we haven't migrated all our tables, all our stuff into our database. So if I bring up my terminal back, I'm going to show you what it shows when we run our project. So remember when we run the project and it shows, if I scroll up here, and it shows you have 18 unapplied migrations that I said we're going to talk about. Now, these 18 unapplied migrations, as you can see, they are migrations for admin, auth, which is authentication, content, um, sessions, and all of that. So we need to actually migrate this. And for us to migrate this so that when we are migrating all of these particular apps or these particular classes or models, then we're migrating it to our SQLite database in our backend. So first of all, let's cut out of this particular runtime. And what we can just do is to say python3 manage.py migrate. So once I say this, everything should work perfectly. 
once I run server now, if I come back in here, right, I refresh and I try to log in. You see, it gives me a different error. It says, please enter current information, current user name and password for a staff account. Now, it has actually checked the database to see if this particular details is in the database. But since it didn't see it in the database, then it gives told us that please check the username and password because this is wrong. Now, for us to actually create an admin or a staff account, what we're going to do is to create it from our terminal. So let's cut out of the runtime again. And to create this, we're going to say python3 manage.py create super user. So admin users or staff accounts are called super users. So once you run that, it's going to tell you to input your username. Let's just say admin. Mm, let's leave the email address blank and let's give it a password. So let's say something like, let's just give it admin also. Admin. It says it didn't match. Let's make sure we type that correctly. So now it says password validation. Yes. Now it has created our super user successfully. Let's run this project again. Run server. Okay, let's cut out of that. Control C and let's press nope cut out of that. So we say run server. And now if we come in here, let's hit refresh. No, let's actually hit this. So now let's change this to admin. So the username is admin and password is admin. If I hit login, boom, you can now see that let me remove this. That I have this basic Django admin panel. So what this is doing is that it's just showing me all the database I have and I can interact with it. I can add database. I can delete data from the database. I can see whatever I have in my database. So as default, Django creates these two databases for us, which are groups and users. So these users, when a user signs in or registers to your platform, is going to be saved in this database right here. So you see that we just created a new data. We just created a new user and that user has been registered as admin under this user database. So this is the default database that Django created for us. But as you can see right here in these models, we created our own database, but that is not showing here. Now, the reason why this cool database is not showing here is because of two things. When we migrated, we did Python manage.py migrate. So what this is doing is that it just migrates what is already there as default. But when we add something, whenever we change anything in these models of py, we need to run a command called make migrations. Now this make migrations is going to save the change that we made. Then we're going to say python manage.py migrate, which is now going to migrate to that changes. So what we're going to do now, let's cut out of this runtime again. And we're going to say python3 manage.py make migrations. So the changes we made in these models of py file is going to update it. So whenever you change, imagine I come here and change this max length to 1000. I have to come back here and say make migrations. And after that, I'm going to run migrate again. So you can see now that it says migrations for demo app. You can see that it says I created a model called school. So it has seen the changes that I have made. It's basically tracking all the changes. And now we want to migrate this change. So now we're going to say python3 manage.py migrate. Now running migrations, all the migrations has been applied successfully. Let me run this project again. If I come back to the admin server, you should expect that we should see this, right? Because we've migrated it. No, no, no. We have to do one more thing. So what we need to do now is that in this admin.py file, so where is going to go in here? Remember I said earlier in this series that I'm going to explain all the files as I go along. So that's what I'm doing right now. As I said, models.py is where we store all the models, anything to do with databases. Now this admin.py file is where we register anything we want to see on this admin panel. So we have migrated this particular school database, this school model to our database. But that doesn't mean that we're going to see it in the admin panel. This is because we didn't say that we want to see it in the admin panel. So for us to actually tell Django that we want to see that model that we created in the admin panel, we're going to come into this admin.py file and we're going to register the model on here. So whatever we register here is automatically going to be changed or updated here. So to do this is also easy. What I'm just going to do is to come here and import this particular class from this models.py file. So to do this with the normal Python command, I'll say from models, 
import school. So once I import school, this school model is not seen in this admin.py file. What I'm going to do is now say admin.site.register. And I'm going to register school. So what I'm saying is that on the admin panel or on the admin site, register school. So right here, if I cut out of this, I run server, it gives us this error that says no, no module named models. So what we can just do is to say from dot models import school. So as you can see, everything is working now. If I come here and hit refresh, boom, we can now see that we have school shown here. And as default, it just pluralizes it. So it add S at the end because it's a bunch of schools and not just schools. So that is actually, actually a very smart feature. So as you can see right here, we've been able to import school, except from the models, import school, and then we registered school on the admin site. This is what we want to do. So we don't really need this admin file for now, except we create another model I want to register it. So let's just close this up and let's close this terminal. So if I come in here now and open this school, it's blank. This is because we just created this particular database, but we, there is no value in there. We haven't done anything to it. So what we are going to do now is to just manually create a new data. So as you can see, all the fields which we specify their name, name, amount of teachers, students, subject, owner, and private, everything are the same thing as here. So as you can see, it's actually very small because it just uses this object oriented programming technique or this class to create a whole database for us. That is what we call the Django ORM. So what we can just do now is to have the name of the school. Let's just say demo school, demo school one. An amount of teachers, let's say we have 100 teachers and we have a thousand students and we have like, let's say 250 courses and the owner, let's just say demo owner. And is it private? Let's say, yes, it is private. So we can see that it gives us the input field corresponding to the data type. A character field, we need a field to input it. An integer field, we need a field. Right here, we can increase it because it knows it's an integer. So it increases it by a whole number each time. And we can also decrease it by a whole number. It does the same thing for here and here. But this is a character, so it doesn't do that. And this is a Boolean, so is it that true or false? So what we can just do is just save this. And once we save this school object one, so this is a data in this particular school's database. So we can see this now. Let's actually add another one. And I'm going to show you how you can retrieve all the data you have in this your database in your normal template so we can show them here. Right? So I'm going to show you how to do that. So let's add like three more different data. So let's say save and add another. So this is going to add another one. So let's say demo school two and they have 20 teachers and two, let's say 1200 students and they offer 50 subjects, owner, demo owner two. And is it private? No, let's say that is not private. Let's say save and add another. So add school, demo name three, 10, 100, 10, owner, demo owner three, and let's say this is private. So once we save this now, we have three data in this particular school database. What we can just do is to come in here and I'm going to show you a technique or a way we can get all the data we have in this database right here. Now you're going to use this a lot when you're building web applications. So what I just want to show you is that we can actually import. So just the way we imported this particular class, right in this admin, right here in admin, we can do the same for views. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to import this view, import this model in here, and then I can do anything I want with it. I can either create a new database from my code. You know, I, I did it manually from the admin file, but when you're actually building a real project, you don't want to do that. You want to create a database that you can actually, you know, create, perform operations from here, like delete something from the database, update the database, create a new data in the database. So. I'm going to show you how to 
get all the data in the database. And in the next video, when we connect this our project to PostgreSQL, I'm going to show you how to sign a user up, like how to register a user on your platform. So that is when we're actually going to see how to like create a new database, you know, update database, delete and all of that stuff. But for now, let me show you how to check, get data from this database right here. So I want to get, let's say I want to get all the names of all the schools we have on this our database. Pretty easy. So what I can just do is to come in here. So let's remove this now. We don't really need this. What we can just say is to say, we also don't need this. Let's say from dot models, import school. And we can just say something like schools is equals to school. Now this school is an object, right? So we can say dot objects dot all. Now what this does is that it returns a list of all the objects or basically all the data in this particular school database. Now, once we do that, the technique we learned of passing or sending data to our template file, that is what we're going to do in here. So we're going to say schools, giving a value of schools. It's, let's cancel this and save. It's actually that easy. So what you just need to do is import the school database or the school class, you know, say school.objects.all is going to show you all the objects and store it in this particular variable called schools. Then we are sending that to the template file. Now we can access this from the template file. And what we can just do, so in here, what I'm going to say is something like, so let's have an H1 still. And let's close it. So what I'm going to say in here is, I'm going to use a for loop. So what we did right here, we sent a list, as I said, a list of all the objects we have in our database. So for us to loop through or get right down every single values, we need to loop through that list. Just the way we do normally in Python, we have a list, we want to show all the list, we can just loop through the list. That is what we're going to do in here. But how do we actually loop in just a normal template file in an HTML file? Now we can do this using the Django template language. This Django template language gives us some some particular format that we can use to perform, you know, conditional statement like if else statement. We can use it to loop through, you know, perform for loops and all of that. So we're gonna I'm gonna show you how to use the for loop in this particular video right now. So to do the for loop, I'm just gonna say open the curly bracket, put percentage sign, and we're gonna say for school. Just the way we do in Python for school in let's say schools because we sent a variable named schools. So we're saying for school in this schools database, in this schools variable, in schools, what we have to do is to end the for loop. So we're just gonna say end for, so that has ended the for loop. So in here, we wanna say school, school dot name. So we're saying school dot this name. So we wanna get all the names. But remember that whenever we're doing something like this, we need to put it in double curly braces. This is all we need, literally. Once we have this, if I come in here and I hit refresh, you can now see that it says demo school one, demo school two, demo school three. So if I come back here now and let's say I add a school and say something like demo school four, let me give it to teachers, free students, yeah, and say demo owner, demo owner four, and let's say it's private. If I save this now, now I have four different data. If I come in here and hit refresh, you can see that now it has been updated here. So what I just showed you is how to query your database, get data from your database, and then show it in your template file, which is gonna be very useful for something like, let's say a user size into your website, and you want to get the name of that user that signed in. So you have to query the database, get the username from the database, and then show the user like, welcome to me or welcome whatever the username is. So I hope you understood everything we did in this video, because that is all for this particular video. And this is probably one of the most crucial parts while learning Django, because you're going to use it for everything that you're going to build whenever you're dealing with databases in Django. So that's going to be all for this video. I hope you are enjoying this series. If you are, please don't forget to smash the like button and subscribe. 
And as I said, Linode has a 60 day $100 credit that you can use to follow along in this series. And that is going to be very useful in the next video. So thanks for watching to this point. And if you like more tutorials like this, don't forget to subscribe, as I said, and also drop in the comments what video you want us to cover next. And having that said, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.